hi guys today we're going to talk about the red color family so we uh, this sort of comes from a comment that I got when I did the aeronauts um, video and how did I build the reds on the balloon so we're going to use this little Strathmore cotton notebook and we're going to talk about the types of reds in my palette why I choose which ones and how I build them So this is the painting I'm talking about and I have a whole video kind of about this and how I did parts of the um, painting here but specifically we're going to talk about how the reds that I like to use and how I build them. So this is my regular palette that we use on here mostly and I have the uh, two reds here that you would see in a lot of main palettes. I have a cool and a warm red and I have specific like a specific variation of those colors and I will sort of go through and explain why I like them and why I use them and then we're also going to pull a couple out from this is like my main palette and um, we're gonna look at some of those colors as well and why like I will pull one of those out if I need to use that So you can see here when I started I had quite a pool of colors into this uh, section of the sort of quinacridone rose uh, type section or um, you know the cooler red and I have narrowed that down to ones that I really like because I mean you just don't need that many that are so similar to each other. So you can see here this is where I started to uh, figure out that generally you need a, a lighter value, a mid-tone value and a darker value of each colour or that's what I like to have in my palette. Um, and then here you can see I was testing the River Vale, Daniel Smith and a Schmincke. Um, they're all sort of the same pigment. The Schmincke one's called Ruby Red but and the Daniel Smith ones are quinacridone rose, but they're all pretty similar. Again, here you can see kind of a pooling of colors there. And at that time, I wasn't sure uh, which color to choose. And I had tested so many reds and so many like cool and warm reds, sort of more towards the quinacridone rose and more towards a red. So we're just gonna have a look in my swatching book and then you can kind of see some of the reds that I've tested in here and you know one of them you might like one of the things I don't want you to feel like is that you need to have the colors that I have so I have you know worked for a long time and have really specific kind of needs out of the different paint colors uh, but you can have any colors that you want so I'm just showing you kind of where I'm at and what I do and you can use your own colors in similar ways to what I'm doing um, Yes, yeah, so I just want, don't want you to feel like you need these colors. Um, but at the same time, I know that it's really hard to find the right colors and it takes a long time to figure it out. So I do want to share that with you in that way. And you know, I'm totally happy to share that. So you can see here how many colors, like just Daniel Smith has pooling around this sort of color. And uh, you can see probably in my last video the how to mix pink and peach. When I have my pinks on the side, swatch on the side, there's such a difference in range in those colors. And it's taken me a long time to find all those colors and to figure out, you know, how to create that with all different pinks. So uh, I'm just kind of pulling out my color swatches here and showing you some of the differences between the reds and so here we have like the quinacridone roses I think the Schmincke the Daniel Smith and the Rivervale one so I ended up choosing the Rivervale one I think it's a little bit warmer than the Daniel Smith one and also um, I like the Rivervale pyrrole red it's really vibrant and beautiful 
and then the mine red from Daniel Smith is like a strawberry red. So you can see here the differences are so small that you know it may not matter uh, which one you have but um, or you know there is some significance to it depending on your painting so you know again it just really depends what you're looking for but as far as reds go I am really particular um, you know I've swatched a lot and because I like to use watercolor with bloom so I like to add water in and let the pigment travel it is very difficult to find a red that doesn't look like you have sort of cut your finger on the paintbrush and it's kind of gone all over the page so I, I, I'm, I've gone through quite a lot of reds to try and find ones to minimize that and find ones that are really vibrant and beautiful so what we're looking at here is my last year's um, Sheik Sparrow and kind of planner slash um, journal and I, I'm just actually looking for this little circus tent so we're going to do a similar thing to the balloon so I'll build the color the way I did on the balloon but I'm going to just show you in a smaller form with this little circus tent Okay, so before we start the circus tent, let's just swatch these colors and see what they're all about. So the first one I swatched is the Rivervale Ruby Red, I believe, and it's it's such a beautiful color. It goes, you can see there's sort of a brown color and then once you once the light hits it, like you can see in the palette on the right, it, it just goes the perfect ruby color. The next one is Pi uh, Rivervale Pyrrole Red and it is a really beautiful vibrant red and then the one we're doing now is the Daniel Smith Mayan red so it's like a strawberry red and you can see there those are the three reds that I use to build layers and I really like um, doing that so if I want to build layers that's when I'll pull the pyrrole red out so those would be classed as uh, warmer reds even though to me the Mayan red would be my warm red and the Pyrrol uh, red would be my cool red, uh, they would generally be called warmer reds and they're, they've got more, they're going more towards the yellow spectrum and now these would be considered cooler reds even though to me these would be dark pinks. So um, they're, for mixing though they're going to give you brighter colours. So. Um, the first one we had there was the Rivervale uh, Quinn Rose and then we have the Schmincke Ruby Red and, and I think they're the same pigment and then we have this one is the Daniel Smith Road Knight this is the one I carry in my palette I really love the um, Daniel Smith Primatech range which is made from like the semi-precious stones and the earth colors I think it's amazing that they can take something out of the earth that you know uh, mostly we would wear on jewelry or something and they can create a paint with it so I'd like to use those wherever I can and then this one is the Daniel Smith permanent rose matter so this is also a beautiful one you can see it's slightly it's pretty similar to road night but it's got a little bit more vibrance to it Okay, so I'm going to start sketching the circus tent now and it's basically just a triangle and then a rectangle underneath it. So I'm just adding a little flag to the top and I will pull the sketch up uh, so you can see it. But it's a really simple sketch. You can see that I'm doing the lines quite lightly so that if I want to change anything that's really easy. I don't even use an eraser.
So you can see when I want to, want to go in and change something, I can just keep changing that. And then because this is a water soluble lead pencil, so it's the Faber-Castell Graphite Aquarelle from Jackson's. And you can just get these as single pencils. Um, once you draw with it and then you're painting, this kind of goes into the pigment and helps to create shadows. So uh, as long as you've painted it lightly, it should um, work in with your painting really nicely. And yeah, I don't find it a problem. I don't find that I need to erase it or anything like that. So you can see I'm just kind of fiddling around. I'm doing some really simple bows to hold the curtain, the tent curtains open and drawing some stripes everywhere and then drawing sort of a little scalloped um, scalloped border underneath the, the roof. And so now if we look at the balloon, I'll show you how I built that and how I shaded it to create sort of the um, the shape and you know to make it look a little bit 3d so the first thing I start with is Mayan red because it's the lightest shade so we're only using the top line at the minute and we'll go into the bottom line of colors in a minute so we're just using the Mayan red and then I sort of block in all the red stripes with the Mayan red Okay, so the next thing I do is I try and lift some of that color if I want any highlights. Now you can either do this several ways. You can either, um, you know, leave a little bit, some parts a little bit lighter as you're painting, but this is such a small area. So I just sort of blocked it all in and um, I'm just kind of trying to lift a little bit of that. Red is a hard color to lift, but I'm not too worried about it. So. Um, that's just I'm just kind of showing you the process that I would do and so now I'm taking the pyro red and I am just adding that on one side of the stripes to kind of create shading on that side So you can see I just dipped into the yellow there. So while I'm letting that dry, I um, am going on to a different part of the painting. So I think that's important with watercolor. You always have to move around the painting to let things dry. Um, and with the painting as well, I should have mentioned that I didn't let it um, the first layer dry. I just went straight back in with the pyrrole orange when it was semi dry. And so now I'm going back in with my ruby color, the uh, color that's going to create some shimmer and I am again adding that over the top of the pyrrole red just to create little sparkles every now and then okay so while we're letting that dry we're going to look at these cooler reds or the dark pinks so we're going to uh, use them kind of one of my favorite ways and to show you the range that you can get just from this one pink as well so we are using a quin pink from or Quinn Rose from Rivervale and we're starting the center of a rose so we are using it quite uh, full strength to begin with and we do sort of moon shapes so to start with I put like three moon shapes around each other or basically it's sort of a C 
and then um, we just keep going with the same sort of shapes around the rows and we get lighter every time so we will dip our brush in water and just keep getting lighter so I wasn't sure how I'd like to go on camera because I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see it so I did it I uh, kept sort of trying to figure out um, you know I put a little bit more color in I think than I generally would but hopefully you can get the idea here we just keep going around uh, the flower with these sort of crescent moons or the sort of a C shape. Okay, so you can see here that is kind of how I would use one color to create a rose and you can go from really dark to really light with just the one color. So if you find that you have made the petals a little bit too dark, you can easily rinse your brush off, dab it onto the paper towel and then to sort of dry it out and then try and lift the color like that. And then you can see here that I am going back in with this ruby color and I am just adding that into the center. I really like doing that as well. Okay, so now that the uh, circus tent has dried, we're just going to go back in with French ochre and we're going to uh, paint the scalloped border underneath the roof. So French ochre is one of my go-tos for soft shadows and sort of white areas to create movement and shadow in those areas. And you can see here that I will also put just little bits through the white uh, stripes on the circus tent as well. And then I'm going to use the same French ochre to go over sort of the inside of the tent and start to create some shading and shadows in there as well. And then we'll use some lemon yellow to brighten that up to create like a glow. So the other colour that I like to use when using reds and creating shading is this porphyry violet ochre. Oh, I like to use this for, sh for darker shadows a lot anyway, but this is like a hematite violet. You could mix a brown and a purple. Um, I got I got this one from Rivervale, but I don't know if she sells those anymore, but I know that Colors of the Iron Range sell them and they have really gorgeous paints. So uh, you can get it there. They also have like a hematite violet, um, like a, a few different really nice looking ones, uh, Mars violet or something like that, Cote d'Azur violet. So they have quite a nice selection. Uh, but anyway, what I'm doing is the same thing I did with the other reds and just deepening up the shadows right on the tip of that edge. Now, if this was a larger subject you were drawing, you could, you know, start with the um, violet ochre and then mix it with a little bit of the red to create a softer gradation there. But, you know, this is so small that this is just the way we're doing it. And you can see here now we're going to sort of add the yellow to finish off the glow in the center and you can also um, glaze that or redo that several times as well and then we go around the outside and I love doing this um, you go around the outside and you let the water go further on the page than you want the uh, watercolor to go so that when you put the watercolor in it just fades softly into the page 
So you can see here as I start to add the color and this is Jean Brouillet number two by Holbein. I, I don't put it to the edge of the water. I'm just letting that, I'm letting the water soften it out itself. So the last thing we're gonna do here is get the good old Windsor and Newton gold drawing gold. I love this. Uh, I use it for writing. I use it in art and get the dip pen and I'm just going over those bows with this. Now the thing that I really enjoy doing with this is so you can see that the rose below it is not quite dry and so it bleeds a little bit and uh, diffuses really nicely and that's what you know uh, I like putting this on before the paintings dry so not when it's very wet or it'll just shoot everywhere but just when it's semi like semi moist or just barely barely moist you, you know you don't really want too much water on there still So I finish off the scallops underneath the tent roof with the gold there as well and then I uh, glaze a little bit more around the tent to sort of uh, brighten that glow. I do another glaze of the Jean Brie number two and then I also add some uh, yellow into that which I, I don't think I show um, and just creates a really nice atmosphere. So we will keep doing the colour spotlights and uh, we'll do Potter's Pink next but I, I, I'm waiting for something so that I can uh, show that um, the comparison video uh, but let's see the these little colour family series I think will be really nice and helpful just to be able to show quite a few colours at once and similar colours. And so you can see here that I'm just using the uh, French ochre again and I am going underneath the tent roof there to try and give a little bit more uh, shading and I'm just kind of showing you here the um, the two colors that I like to use with the red the porphyry violet ochre so I do like a light swatch there so you can see how light you can get that for shading as well and then it can go quite dark and then the French ochre and I'm going to show you uh, the difference between a regular ochre. I know I always talk about the French ochre, but I, I just wanted to show you the difference between like a regular ochre and why I like the French version from Daniel Smith. So um, this is the Holbein uh, ochre and you can see it's got sort of more mustard undertones. And then when I swatch out the Daniel Smith one, it has more caramel undertones. So I just wanted to show you here, a couple of you have asked me about this sketchbook and you can see here, I, I don't know what this is, but there's white coming through the um, the colours there. So that doesn't really look too appealing to me. Like I, I don't mind this little one, but I don't know that I would invest in a larger one. Um, and the, the last thing that we're going to do is I just want to show you if you have one red, how you can create a lot of different tones from that red. So we are using the 
Pyro Red by Rivervale Watercolors and I just start with the strongest concentration. I dip it in the water and then re-swatch uh, and then I just keep doing that until we get a very light colour. So you can just use the one red and get such a different um, you know, range of value there. Okay guys, so uh, I'll be back with more of these colour building series. We'll do sort of lighter pinks and peaches next and then or something like that. I'll figure out how we're going to work it. Uh, and I also have a, color, a paper video coming up. So we're going to look at different types of paper, different sketchbooks that I like. Uh, I think you'll enjoy that too. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.